Andy Johnson, Minnesota State University. We are talking about a balanced approach to literacy instruction. What might it look like? Well, I'll show you. In a balanced approach, and I obviously favor a balanced approach, a teacher's number one job is to help children fall in love with books. After that, reading instruction becomes effortlessly. You are attending both to the volume of reading, and we know that volume of reading is highly correlated with reading achievement, and voluntary reading. Students want to read. They read outside the classroom. They read at home. They read in the summer. In a balanced approach, we don't call it reading class. We know that reading, writing, speaking, and listening all reinforce each other and all, all should be taught within the same context. Writing and speaking enhance, listening and reading, etc., etc. One enhances the other. We do not separate them in isolated little bits. So in a literacy class, they're writing about what they read, they speak about what they read, they're listening to good books, etc., etc. Now, number three, explicit instruction. I am the holiest of whole language guys or people, but we all believe that explicit instruction is necessary. All children need explicit instruction. The sticky wicket comes in how much? Some people think that it is sufficient. I, anybody research, says that explicit instruction is necessary. Explicit instruction in phonics is necessary, but it is not sufficient. There should be as little in explicit instruction as needed. Now, I didn't say it's possible, as needed. Some need more, some need less. But the goal of a reading program is not to successfully complete worksheets or to successfully demonstrate uh, your ability to do little bits or sub-skills related to literacy. The goal is to read and write for real purposes. That's the goal of our literacy instruction. So, Nancy Atwell and others say in most reading classes and writing classes, literacy classes, you should have authentic reading and writing practice. 70 to 80 percent should involve authentic reading or authentic writing, and only 20 to 30 percent of, a cla of classroom time should be spent on skills instruction and practice. And again, use the athletic analogy. When I coached wrestling, I did not spend 80% of the practice doing drills on various skills. I had them wrestling for real purposes, which meant trying to take down and pin the opponent. Authentic applications. Children, students have regular opportunities to read real books, just like adults do, for real purposes, just like adults do, which means you read to enjoy or to get information. You are writing for real purposes to remember ideas, to organize ideas, and to communicate ideas. In a balanced program, what you do in class should reflect reality or look like reality to the greatest extent possible. You're not doing artificial stuff, you're doing real stuff. Number five, reading and writing strategies. You are teaching strategies and processes. Processes for identif uh, word identification and comprehension. Comprehension processes or skills. And processes and strategies for writing. This is how you generate ideas. We know that social interaction is very important. Children need to talk to each other and with each other about what they read. Children need to get feedback on their writing. What do you think about it? What part do you like? Social interaction, talking, enhances learning at all levels and in all subject areas. Body of research to show that social interaction enhances learning, especially in literacy. Number seven, you are using literacy across the curriculum. You are teaching literacy as a tool for learning. How to read to get information, how to read expository texts or textbooks, how to write to organize ideas. You teach, as I said before, not one way to recognize words, not just phonics or phonetic analysis. You teach multiple ways.
analogies, morphemic analysis, context clues, sight words, phonics, and sometimes it's okay to skip the word. Lots of reading practice and writing practice, where they are reading whole or connected real texts, where they're writing complete stories or complete ideas, not paragraphs, not sentences, not these artificial bits of slop we find in basal readers. In a balanced reading program and an effective reading program, students are making choices, just like adults do, of their reading material and their writing material. Now, choice doesn't mean total choice all the time, but neither does it mean no choice none of the time, which more often occurs. Children get to decide, I like that book or I don't like that book. I want to write about this or I don't want to write about that. All right? Teacher empowerment. The teachers are able to make decisions about their students, about what they teach, how they teach it, and how they assess. We want knowledgeable, creative, intelligent teachers. Well, then let's let them be knowledgeable, creative, and intelligent. The classroom teachers know what's best for their students, not some government legislator at the state capitol or at in Washington, D.C., not some for-profit organization trying to sell a product. Teachers know best. And then last, the seat work. It's not used to keep students busy. Traditional classroom, three classes, you had a small group here, you gave a worksheet. They did that to keep them busy while you could do instruction here. All right. Seat work is used to practice skills. And the best seat work at all for literacy is to have them actually read books that they enjoy, or to write about things they want to write about. It's not that complicated, people. A balanced approach to literacy instruction. Contact me if you have questions, comments, or just want to call me a silly little man.